So if you watch my previous video, you've, man you've, you've seen the fact that I've managed to shoehorn a uh, RTX 460 into a Mac Pro 5.1 or the old school cheese grater. And you're probably thinking, why would you be doing this? Why, why on earth would you want to try this kind of stuff? The machine's 14 years old. Well, uh, there's a bit of a, you know, there's a big problem. The big thing with filming and everything like this, there's a, you, you acquire the footage, you get it back, and then you offload, that's one, and then you normally encode it to proxies, and then you work with those proxies, and then you encode it to another format to send it out to wherever it's gonna go, ProRes, whatever. Now, there's obviously a, a million combinations of how you do this. I've got Canon cameras, but we use a lot of reds and things like that. So the big problem is you, you, know, you can shoot proxies in the camera, fine, um, but sometimes you don't. Sometimes we get, you know, I've got material, the Canon material, and I don't have proxies. And also, even when that's all done, uh, you want to encode that out to another format. So ProRes is great, all these things, but there's, a, there's certain formats that you want to go to, and you want to go to them quickly. So the whole thing was, I put the RTX um, 460 into the 5.1, because it's there, the machine is there, and I managed to get it working. Because the last thing you want is to do any kind of encoding on your main sort of work machine. You want to have some other machine to do all this donkey work that you can leave running. And the Mac 5.1 just does this now. So what it did, just to show you, you know, I mean, my um, Mac Pro, my Mac M3 Max laptop is like was top spec last year. It's like exactly the same as the base model M4 Pro now. It's 36 gigs of RAM all this sort of business and they you know they go for three and a half thousand pounds uh, this thing was in the cupboard um and i bought 256 rtx card a 256 pound rtx card and put it in there and now it's going to become my encoding machine and i'll sort of go through some reasons why okay so obviously it's running windows because there's no drivers for the rtx 460 for um, mac so we've got that going on so i thought I'd do some kind of benchmark workout just to show you what it does anyway. So let's look at look at the technology. So the RTX 460 has encoded and decode of all these you know, H.264, H.264, 265, all the way down um, HEVC 10 bit, HEVB frame. And then if we jump over to the MacBook Pro 14 inch M3 Max, it has encoder and decoder, hardware acceleration, 264, H ProRes, ProRes RAW, video decode and encode. And also at the bottom it has AAB1 decode we'll come back to that so okay so what i did was uh, the only one i could find i mean if anybody's asking yes the 5.1 with a 460 in it runs games amazingly you can play everything at 1080p at top spec it's mental it's really good but let's talk about work i mean so the only way i could sort of find a benchmark was davinci resolve davinci resolve works on both platforms and Blackmagic are brilliant and uncanny where they, they sort of like optimize that software per platform. So the line explosion is amazing and they really are good at optimizing it for the machine it's on. So the Windows version of Dinty Resolve, which is on that one over there, and then I've got the PC, the Mac version on this one. So basically what, what I did was I set them up and then I, I got a big chunky folder of material. I got some Raptor footage some Canon CRM 4K off of a C70, and I've got some Komodo footage, dropped them into a folder, and then used Blackmagic's um, proxy encoder just to check the encoding speeds. Okay, so let's have a look at the first one. So here we are, this is the 5.1, encoding a raw material with a Blackmagic proxy generator. And there's about 140, 130 gigs of material split across them, and it took five minutes 25 and H.264, uh, 525 and H.265 and there's a half res setting in there. Obviously you can't do um, ProRes on the on the PC, so we just did the half res and then it was 5.5. So I did exactly the same thing on the Mac. And here we are, so encoding it. And it's sort of like H.264, uh, 2 minutes 56, um, 2 minutes 54, and then the half res is that. So it's not, it's about half, half as slow. That's my MacBook. Okay, so yeah, so 50% slower on that machine, but on a 256 pound, 250 pound card, three and a half thousand, 250 pound card. So you, what you could get away with that, if you bought that card and put it into even a more modern 
a rubbishy PC, you've got extreme encoding power there. It's just about the cards. So let's jump forward. And the next thing I did was I ran out. I, I dumped that material into Resolve, and ran out a 4K 25 frames per second version in uh, ProRes HQ 422, and then in something a bit more chunky in Avid DNX HR 444. Now the reason is, obviously it's a bit slightly unfair. When the Mac does this, the Mac's got ProRes encoders and decoders, the PCs don't have that. So I used a format that was agnostic, which is Avid for the bigger one. Anyway, so using shutter encoder, which is great, to just do pure encoding based on it. Shutter encode is a freeware thing. It's based on FFmpeg. It's fantastic and you can do all sorts of things with it. So here we go. So basically using shutter encoder on a 4K ProRes 422 25 frames per second file, it took it um, it's about 12 minutes in running length if anybody's interested. Um, it took four minutes, 43, and then H265, it took 436. And then did the same exercise on the MacBook and it took about a minute less. It took about a minute less. Okay, that's not bad, I think, for a, a old machine, but much, you know, it's not bad at all for a for a, a very cheap graphics card if you think about it. Okay, so the next thing was to do the same exercise, but do it with the Avid DNX four 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 file, a bit more chunky. It's about four hundred and forty two gig file. But I mean, when you make your videos and stuff, you should always uh, render them out in the highest quality format. So you know if if you can, a 10 bit format, and then use it as a mezzanine format, it's called, and then encode down from your master. So, on this, I've used Shutter Code with the, on the 5.1, and it's coming at um, 5 minutes 30 and then 4 minutes 43, respectively, for H.264 and H.265. Then we do it on the Mac Pro, and again, it's like a minute, a minute or so less, um, same type of file. So, there's not huge variations in speed here based on that card. Okay, so it's it's like half the half as fast, two you know a third less, all this sort of stuff. It's it's not that far away considering the expense you've got to do this. So the last one's the killer. Now the last one is the killer one. I don't know why they did this, and this is in the latest version of the M4 Max. They do not have AV1 encoding, and why is AV1 encoding important? If you, when you start to use it. It's a really low bandwidth, very high quality format that you can use to dump up your, you know, you come out in ProRes, you can encode it uh, and then dump up to um, YouTube and they look, you, you know, your videos look great. It's 10 bit, it's a great format. But they didn't do it, do it in the Macs. However, in the, I think it's, I can't remember the name of the architecture on the 460s, they built in AV1 encoding. So let's have a look at AV1 encoding of the same material. So here we go. On the Mac, AV, on the Mac, 5.1, um, 4K DN XR 444, 25 frames per second, took five minutes 30 to encode into AV1. And the 4K ProRes HQ 42225 took four minutes 43. And so that's it literally blitz through and out it goes ready for YouTube. And then we did that on the Mac. Now in shutter encoder as well, it doesn't, the Mac doesn't have encoding. So it's doing software, so it's doing it on the CPU. So it took 19 minutes for the Avid DNX and 18 minutes for the um, ProRes HQ file. So it's a massive amount of time. So if you're a content creator and you're, you're, you're working, you can do H.265, it's all fine. You can still get good speeds and stuff. But if you want to go out to AV1, you know, you, I don't know why they've left it off the, these generations of Macs. But it, it's sort of one of those things where it's the bandwidth, the size of the file. So if you're doing like a, I don't know, 12 minute, 13 minute file, it's very much, it's a lot, lot smaller for you to upload. So it's a lot quicker. But anyway, it's an interesting point. I thought this was an interesting point that, I mean, not only the fact that I, I put this onto a crazy uh, cheese grater and did this, but the fact that you can just see if you spend some time doing this as a content creator, choose wisely. Because with an Apple, I mean, I love it. This is a great machine, three and a half thousand pound machine. However, there's things that are missing and the speed gains aren't so much. So having a cheap PC potentially, or a 5.1 if you want to go down that road, with a reasonably specced um, RTX card in it, you do well. There is one thing here. It doesn't matter how big the card is. So if you go from a 460 to a 490, uh, I don't believe the encoding gets any quicker 
However, the 490, the RTX 490, has two streams. It can do two, it has two sets of the encoder material things. So it doesn't matter if you go up. You won't get an increase in speed, apparently, but you can do two simultaneous streams on the 490, I believe. But even saying that, you know, you, you, if you're doing encoding and decoding, I mean, what I've got set up now, which is quite clever, is literally all I do is when I, when I, I, I sort of render, I render it out and basically it goes over the network, or a 10 gig card, straight into this, and then I can set that up and just render it straight up and put it onto YouTube much, much quicker because I use AV1. Anyway, I hope that's been informative. It's really interesting, isn't it, that the, these cards, if you leverage the technology, the decode and encode on the cards, you get much more powerful computers, you get much more value for your money. Anyway, I hope that was useful. It's an interesting test. Um, and if you've got a 5.1, have a go with my you know, crazy setup. But if you've got a cheap PC chassis with a reasonable processor, an RTX 460 is a great buy for a content creator who's using a Mac who wants to do AV1. Anyway, thanks for watching.